Hello, this is Deborah again with Black Education TV. Wanted to talk a little more about practical living, you know, living that makes sense. What I'm covering now are composting toilets, and many of you may be familiar with composting toilets, many of you may not be, but I wanted to come from an economical standpoint. Um, most of you don't realize um, how much water is used in flushing toilets, okay? When my husband took up plumbing classes a long time ago, years ago, um, they actually said the majority of our water bill is actually using, or flushing the toilet, should I say, flushing the toilet, because uh, depending on the size of your family, the toilet may be flushed uh, dozens of times a day. And that's literally water down the drain, um, money down the drain, you see. And most of us don't think of it that way. We kind of say, okay, I'm flushing the toilet. I'm ridding, I'm ridding myself of um, what was just put in there, whatever it is. And we think that that's the end of it. Um, please excuse the little, little one in the background here, but she's um, insisting that she sits on my lap. But since this is practical living, part of practical living is having children. And so... Um, back to the composting toilets, I'm showing you images of various designs that we've seen of composting toilets and composting bathrooms where the whole bathroom design is um, complemented by a really awesomely built composting toilet. And I would rather that you do your own research on how they are done because um, you have various styles that you can choose from. You can go from the very basic design to something that's a lot, lot more extravagant, a lot more extravagant. But the whole concept of con composting toilets, to me, is a great idea because you're not utilizing all of this water and essentially running your bill. Essentially running your bill. Okay, you want to you wanna take over this, right? You want to take over this. Okay. Here you go. Um, anyway, back to what I'm talking about here. With the little interruption we have here. Her siblings are busy, so they can't really hold her right now. And Papa is talking to one of the brothers on the phone, so he can't hold her right now. So I am the one to do the job. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Look at that. You see that? Calculator. Yes, there you go. Um, so anyway, back to what I'm talking about here. Um, as you see all of the images of the composting toilets, you see some in mid-construction being built, and you see um, various styles and designs, various types of wood. Um, some of them are actually being put inside of um, outhouses. I mean, um, you, the sky is the limit with these because you're saving a lot of money. And the whole concept is... When you, the reason they're called composting toilets is because it all goes back to the earth. Let me tell you what thought came to my mind. We have yeah. talked about the okay. we've talked about the documentary um, Crapshoot, in which I recommend that you all look at that. Crapshoot talks about the invention of the sewer system, and that's a Roman invention. And what it has done is created this toxic toxic waste worldwide that they have no idea what to do with. And it gets worse and worse and worse because we've all have it, we all have it in our minds that once we flush, that's the end of it, finish, done. No, um, as they stated in the documentary, uh, when you flush, that's not the end of that. Someone else down the line has to deal with that. And that's the part that we are not understanding. Knowledge is power. When you begin to not, to pay attention and research and uh, find out what's actually going on in the world, you can see why there's so much sickness, death, and disease. Come to my mind, I said, you have animals and people in third world nations and you know, other areas that are just using nature the way it was intended to be used. Now, any diseases that you see in certain areas are not always because all these people don't have toilets that flush, a lot of what you see is a result of Western intervention bringing in uh, vaccines and medications and tainted food and things of that nature. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that they don't have all of the modern conveniences that we have, you see. But we've tricked ourselves into believing that. But when I thought about all the animals that just poop, I said, they don't have a toilet. And the, and the, the poop 
and the excrement it just goes back to the land goes back to nature and it blends in the way it was intended to but when you actually put all of that inside of water and you pump it into a sewer system you're creating a toxic sludge a toxic um, bacteria filled water and then what happens is that water goes back into the main river supplies in which it is then recycled and it comes back through your pipes again. So none of us even pays attention to that or knows that. So the, basically the same water that goes through your toilet comes back up through your faucet to drink. And this is why they have to treat it heavily with chemicals because there's so much bacteria and germs and all kinds of things in there. And so... Family, it's time for us to get back to basics, things the way nature intended things to be. Now, the basic con concept of the composting toilets that we're showing you, not the ones that they sell for thousands of dollars uh, where you have to put some type of chemical and all of that, the basic concept of these is to use a container and um, you use wood chips and it is actually composted back into the earth the way it should be, okay? Um, there are many ways of doing these. Um, you can do them however you choose. Um, the sky is the limit because you're saving money on all of the flushing. Like I said, um, many times you will spend the majority of your water bill is on flushing the toilet. It's on flushing the toilet. And so you have us, you, a lot of people, they, they say, well, look, um, so you're saying basically crap in a bucket. Okay, so what will you say if the sewer system fails in which it is doing just that? Okay, um, now I know that this is not practical in all areas. In uh, city areas, it's more difficult to do something like this. Look at these designs very carefully, family. These are not some fly-by-night type units. These are some really nice, nicely well-built um, composting toilets. And... Of course, if you're lazy, forget about this. Don't even worry about it, okay? If you don't have the space where you can um, dig and dump or anything like that, or you care not to use it for compost, um, don't worry about this. Now, of course, you don't use this compost in your vegetable garden. If you have um, other uh, trees um, or other things that you like to, to um, tend to, or you can just recompost the compost or reuse in the composting toilets. Um, I believe Crapshoot has um, one, um, one um, speaker in the documentary that actually does that. Instead of re re repurchasing and repurchasing wood chips to cover and compost, um, she actually compost her compost and she's able to reuse it in her, her system. Okay. Anyway, I just wanted to cover uh, just a bit of this to show you some of the images of what Composting toilets can look like the kind that you can make yourself DIY, do it yourself, um, where you don't have to spend thousands of dollars. You can build something that looks really nice and custom. And of course, you may want to check zoning in your area because not every area allows uh, such things. Um, if you're in a rural area, of course, this is going to be much better. Um, having a lot of land in which um, a lot of people have outhouses, okay? Um, this is a great option if you want to have an outhouse that you don't want to have to dig dig down into or continue to move the outhouse. You can have a system such as this using the wood chips to where you just remove the pail and have designated areas within your acreage to where you are dumping and allowing the compost to settle and do its thing over time and go back to the earth, you see. Um, I think these projects are very fun and w well worth considering because... Right now, our people are just, we're, we're just in a, in a state where we have got to start thinking outside of the box and not worrying about what the Joneses and the Smiths are doing, but thinking more practical. We need to have more practical living, establish more practical living um, ideas for our families moving forward. Um, of course, Western culture wants everything to be convenient but what happens when the convenience is no longer an option okay what happens when you can no longer do the things that you want to do you need to think outside of the box and the time for doing that is now like i said before family please look at some of the videos i'm sorry some of the images that i've shown in this video and get some ideas for designs that you'd like to see 
So if you do decide that you want to do one of the arc style homes or one of the A-frame homes or a tiny home or, you know, any style home that um, is going to be less expensive than your typical um, stick built home, then consider some of these some of these options, some of these designs, or even come up with your own unique design. Anyway, the little one is, is she's stirring up some more. She's tired of playing with the calculator now. So I'm going to go ahead and give her some time and uh, say shalom to your family. I hope um, you've seen something that you like, something that inspires you to make you want to go ahead. Um, just to say this real quick, um, not too long ago we posed a challenge and we said, look, family, uh, what can you do in the next 30 days to improve your family situation? And so I guess I'm asking, what have you done and what will you continue to do moving forward to improve your family situation? Because we don't know what the system or the economy is going to do. So we have got to plan ahead, family. Okay. Uh, she's making too much noise now, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this video off. I love you, family, and shalom.